got to go catch up with Richard. See you later. Also got another joke for you here, um, or just maybe just just facts. To be honest with you, because a pie from Trinidad would cost you uh, about two pounds. A pie from Bahamas would cost you maybe two pounds seventy-five, and a pie from Jamaica would cost you three pounds. These are the pie rates of the Caribbean. Thought I'd just let you know. Hello everybody, just moving again after our second stop of the day, we're having stops every eight miles now, just to try and look after our bodies on the last leg, um, me and Tricky had a little little disagreement over whether Tinkerbell was in Winnie the Pooh or not, um, it got quite heated and we just, we just agreed to disagree for now, so we're just going to carry on and then We'll see whether he talks to me again at the end. Um, but yeah, a bit delayed, aches and pains, but we're getting there. The towpath has been atrocious as well. The the last couple of miles, there's bits where it just disappears and we've got to do a bit of a step and a leap to get over to it. And then there's bits that are overgrown like jungle. The towpath is very unforgiving. Let me tell you that, it's like going through the jungle. <laughs> we had a bit of a strange experience as well with the food that we bought and supplies that we bought where we, we'd have very similar things to eat uh, that we had on the first day and the second day. And I think, we, I don't know about you, Chucky, but I was getting fed up with what I had in my bag. So having Mum and Glyn come down and give us some muffins and different Di different drinks. Different textures, tastes, yeah, I think definitely you you. Whether or not some of that's dehydration, I think the gels ulcerated my tongue, uh, which I think you can get through having those energy gels. Uh, teeth were a bit sensitive, so I don't know whether that has to do with dehydration or your gums, but things tasted different. You wanted to eat different foods. Pork pie was fantastic. That was an interesting thing, really. Whether or not that affected our energy levels is debatable. Yeah. All right, just coming up to our halfway stop for the day. Hopefully over halfway. Um, almost been 11 hours, so we're now looking at finishing probably between 3, 4, 5 a.m. Who knows? Thought I'd give you a quick list of ailments. Um, feet, blisters, yep, ankles. They've got a weird sensation that feels like they're working their way loose from my legs. Um, joints, knee, hip joints, are they still there? Who knows? And uh, stomach, all sorts of messed up, as Tricky will tell you, been messed up all day. Uh, we keep going, we keep going. Ooh. I've invented a new word. It's uh, fatigue. Yeah. Anyone know how to spell it? Because I don't. But <laughs> fatigue brutal. That is it. My list of ailments. The balls of my feet feel like they're burning. 
My little toes look like radishes. <laughs> but I mean, they, they could be worse. They could look like beetroots. <laughs> so I'll take radish. They're quite hot, ain't they, radishes? So, uh, yeah, I'll take that. I've got a, a blister on the side of my foot, which is a complete new one. So that's a little bit naughty, I'll tell you. And then my right kneecap uh, front. Yeah, my, my kneecap. Your front kneecap would be at the front anyway, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> otherwise you'd be, uh, you'd be double jointed and you wouldn't be able to walk, would you? Uh, everything else uh, seems all right. I'm just I'm struggling to get my stride because everything's bloody burning. Uh, yeah, so yeah, fatigue Lee. Got to remember, we're doing this all for a good cause. It'll be worth it in the end. Cheers, guys. Tricky's just popped to the loo at our just over halfway stop and uh, got a secret weapon, a little surprise for him when he comes back. Hopefully, uh, make him smile a bit. Short shorts, let's go. Let's get it done, Tricky, come on. Sam, I think you, that needs a harness to hold that. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need some sort of harness on that wild animal. <laughs> All right, when I signed up for this, I thought that'd be right. Canal's nice and flat. There's no uphills. That keeps going all the way up there. Look how far we've come up already. Yeah. yeah. Give us a break. <laughs> Woo! Eventually, after I finished moaning, we reached the top of the locks and got to mile 125. Our pace had slowed right down now, and we were doing more like three miles an hour, where we'd had hoped to keep up to about 3.3 miles an hour throughout the whole day. Uh, I don't think it was just the injuries and the blisters that were slowing us down now. I think it was just the amount of calories and the amount of steps we've taken over the last couple of days, taking their toll on our bodies. Luckily for us, my wife had got up with my sister and she was planning a surprise visit to give us a resupply, give us some treats and try and see us through to the end of the day. That's things. <laughs> so, Sam, give us an update. Okay. Uh, where are we? 35 miles in to day three, 20-ish miles left. Uh, just come up a massive hill on the canal, which I never thought, I'd, these are the sentence that I'd say. Loads of locks, we've had to come up. Um, blisters galore, I think for everybody, me and Tricky. And uh, yeah, we're just uh, limping home now and we're in limp mode. Uh, going slowly, but we're going to get in. We're going to bring it home, whatever time it is. And uh, yeah, and thank you to everyone for the donations. We're well over three thousand pounds now, which was the target. And uh, thank you to everyone that's come out, everyone that's supported. It's been a real team effort. It's not just been me and Tricky and uh, Neil and Tony that have been doing it. It's been, you know, we couldn't have done it without everyone's support. So thank you very much. All right, guys, um, just about to get dark now, so I just wanted to do a last reel because my phone's dying, and I want that sweet, sweet picture by Gas Street Basin sign with Rich on my phone, and I'm going to finish off the stories with that, but this is the penultimate one. Um, just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you at the end. <laughs> I've got my night headdress on. Yeah. That'll Throwing help me not lose him through the night, yeah. then. <laughs> let's go, Sam, I. Yeah, let's go. We've got places to be. By that time, my feet were absolutely pounding. Yeah. So much so that like, it'd bring tears to your eyes. Your feet would be so pulsating that you'd have, you'd have to stop, regather your thoughts and stuff. But it was like, as long as my legs keep moving, I, I'm not stopping uh, the drive to complete it. We had, we had 15 miles left to do, and mm -hmm. we'd done so much that you're not giving up with 15 miles left. No. Um, although it took... Yeah an age to do that 
And you had knee pain as well, didn't you, on the last I li- had a little bit of knee pain. Okay. I still probably have today, uh, like, recovering, but it wasn't... It was just a niggle. Yeah. If you could, if you were going to do it out of ten, it would be like a two. My feet, the pounding of my feet, I'd be saying is like getting onto like eight to a ten. I've never had pain like that in my feet ever, or come close to that with anything else. We had arranged to to meet up with Tony at the. It was forty mile mark. Wasn't it? I think it was Lapworth somewhere near there. Yep, Lapworth and. Uh... He was going to bring us some food uh, to see us through the night. He told me to go on ahead, didn't you, and meet up with Tony. And I got a bit confused, I think, with what we were doing. <laughs> and ended up coming back to you. We I think we was, we was out of sync a little bit, weren't we? Yeah. Tony, we thought we were closer to Tony than yeah. we thought. And it was, we was probably about a mile out from each other, I think. Yeah. And obviously, because it's dark and you've got no real bearings, you can't see landmarks or anything, you don't know exactly where you are. Yeah. Um, did make it a bit more difficult. Yeah, so then I carried on to the next bridge and when I realised we weren't quite as far along as we thought we were, turned my phone back on to see if I could get hold of Tony and come up with a plan of what to do next. If you was about to what three words, your current location and your experience, what would they be? Uh, nugget. <laughs> <laughs> nugget, G5. Uh, Hello. I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, say emotional, support, and nugget, and finish line. And you got it in the bag? Yeah. Okay. When Tony and Kelly met up with us, they gave us the option of getting a hotel, staying overnight and completing it in the morning, which I don't think either of us were tempted by. No, by it's just point. like, you've just swore at us. <laughs> you've just swore at us. So we've done 130-something 130, 130 miles. We've got 15 left to do. I think they were they were just worried about us and the fact that we, were gonna, we did have a fair few miles to go, 15 miles to go in the night. And you're in so much pain, so I thought maybe... But we just put so much into it, we knew we weren't going to stop, we knew we were going to keep going. And so we carried on, say goodbye to Tony and Kelly. I think that stop was vital for us because we managed to resupply, get a bit of food. Defining moment in that whole walk, deciding to take those chicken nuggets with us was a lifesaver. Because during the night my brain was switching off and like nodding off because it was dark and then just through fatigue, I think, and the only thing that, other than you, like, supporting me from the side, 
stop me falling in the canal. The only thing that kept my brain from not switching off was nibbling on chicken nuggets. Mm. So I basically nibbled on chicken nuggets all the way to Birmingham. <laughs> and Which, because I've say I think that tricked my brain. It stopped my brain from thinking it was tired. I had to concentrate on eating. Yeah. Uh, I remember as well, you were stumbling into brambles on the side of the towpath because you wanted to keep away from the canal. Yeah. Because you were worried about... Falling in. But um, but obviously being on the on the inside, you've got uh, different hazards, haven't you? Like the brambles or the trees, the bushes. So I think I got clobbered in the head and then got caught in the leg. <laughs> so after a long, long night, long painful night, the sun finally came up and we'd made it back to civilization. We'd made it into Birmingham. Just out here, half four in the morning in Birmingham, watching the sunrise. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. So as we got to just before 6am, we'd finally done it, covered the last couple of gruelling miles along the Grand Union Canal and reached the end where it joins the Faisley Canal in Digbeth. Tricky was broken by this point, but all we had to do now was meet up with Lol at Gas Street Basin, jump in his car and get home. So I turned my phone on and as I saw the time, and worked out how long we had left to go to Gas Street Basin, I realised if I ran there, I could get a picture before half six. And a stupid part of me really wanted to do that. But I needed some inspiration, I needed some adrenaline to, to help get me there. We made it guys in Birmingham. Thank you for everyone's support. And we're going to bed now. Sam, you nearly killed me. Because I remember asking you, as we were getting close to the finish, was it ever a question mark to you whether you would you'd get to the end of this? And I think you said... No, I, I don't... No, I, I, it was never... It was always going to... I think if you set your mind to, to it, determination, and you're going to do it. You put the training in and, and then and just keep going. It's, um, that's it. That's the challenge, that's the target. You get there. 
Um, that was it for me, really. As long as my legs kept moving, I weren't stopping. I might have to stop to regain my, my thoughts and get rid of any pain, but get your head straight and then off you go again. So it was never, never a question that we wouldn't have completed it.